What could it be? Is it a Tesla? No, I wish it was a Tesla. Okay, so you guys have been waiting for quite a while for this surprise. And let me show you what I got. That's right. Some of you might know what this symbol means. That's Hasselblad. And this guy in here, check it out. This is the A6D100 Hasselblad with a 50 millimeter on there. And ZR purchased this for aerial mapping work. So 100 megapixel, medium format. It's a beast. And to support this guy, I got the Aero Scientific Flight Cube. So right here is a flight computer to control the camera. And on the back, you can see it's got a bunch of Limo connectors, which are awesome. Uh, your ports, USB, and uh, on here you got your GPS input. So there you go. It's a nice little unit. You got your two SSD drive bays here to record the data. Now a single image on this camera is over 200 megabytes per image. So we're definitely going through a lot of data on this thing. And today we're actually taking it up to do some work. It's been quite the process to set this thing up and get it all to tuned in in the plane. So really excited about this. I've been flying it a lot lately. That's why these videos have not been coming out uh, very frequently recently. Um, but today we're going to be flying up to Fort Sidamoyan and White Court for, I got four different sites to do. Am I in focus? Today, this is exciting stuff. And a one terabyte solid state hard drive. One terabyte SanDisk SSD drive. It's going to go into this flight computer for aerial mapping. Uh, this is the Cube by Aero Scientific. Two SD slots on the back here. We're going to plug it into one of those. I guess you got a keyboard on the one side and then your trackpad on the other. This is going to be really good when I'm flying in the plane. I can have both right beside there. And uh, yeah, it should work pretty well. Vector Nav. You guys probably don't know what this is, but it's an IMU. You can see here, this is the actual IMU. And this is what cost $4,000. This little device. And this little device is going to be mounted exactly uh, probably this way. It's going to be mounted right in line with the camera. And then with the software you can tell it where the IMU is in relation to the camera, so how many centimeters back it's located. <clears throat> when you don't use a gimbal in your plane, these are the next best thing. They're actually better than gimbals because there's no maintenance to them. High-end gimbals in aircraft are very expensive. And these things basically replace the need to have a gimbal. So it'll record uh, the tilt and the yaw and the pitch of each image when it's captured so that the software can kind of calibrate um, the whole map. It knows how e each image was taken, how much it was offset from zero. So in here we have a plate that I got made got CNC'd, um, so that is where the camera mounts to, and then there's a floor hole in there. And I got an IMU, a vector nav, right here, and then the Novotel uh, GPS receiver, it's also an IMU as well. And that's connected to the GPS antennas that I have on the roof. So that's the Novotel one, and then there's a, another GPS puck in here for the vector nav. Uh, I had tons of issues mounting the GPS right here underneath of the Lexan material. Apparently Lexan is not 
GPS um, safe. It's, it's not GPS signal approved, so I was having a ton of connectivity issues with the system. Some, some days it would work, some days it wouldn't. So we're pretty much ready to go. I check everything before I um, start the engine to make sure the GPS lock is good on the system and everything's gonna work. Because there's a lot of cables to connect and there's definitely stuff you can miss. You can see here, good satellite lock. Bunch of cords, I got the flight cube mounted on some uh, vibration isolators on this plate. Here you see the camera. This plate's mounted on vibration dampeners as well. And there it's on. So it records data to this SSD drive, one terabyte here. And that's basically my mapping setup, guys. Underneath here, you can see the floor hole. What do you guys think? Pretty good setup, or what? Morning, I'd like to follow a VFR flight. We're in White Court right now, and we're actually at the Pipistrel headquarters. That's the dealer of the Pipistrel aircraft. This guy here, this is a IFR equipped. Nope, this is actually the dealer's. This is the IFR equipped one. And this one's going to Saskatchewan. So this is brand new. Looks good. But he's got a bunch of antennas here, so you can see that it's definitely geared for some high-end flying. G GPS on top. <laughs> Many GPS. He's got three there. Two big antennas, one on the back. Wow, this thing's decked out with stuff. Pretty crazy. I like this Canadian logo on there though. So this is pretty cool. A little taxi camera right under here on the belly.
we've landed. I didn't have time to start the video again. Um, yeah, I got kind of got dropped out of the sky pretty quick. It's pretty strong winds today. That might be why I wasn't able to stay up. It might be just chopping up the lift a little bit too much. You can see there's a lot of nice puffy clouds, but it's pretty strong and windy here today. I'm just waiting for my ride and we'll head back to the tow road and tow up again and try it again. Winds are supposed to die down here this afternoon, so that might make things easier to stay up. Mm -hmm. 